which is actually our electrical measurement. The electricity is male. Magnetism is female. Something has to couple that electrical spark together, and that's the magnetism. You cannot have electricity without magnetism. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot turn on this light without the male and female principle. You have negative and positive, even the battery of a car. Negative and positive. You've got to have both of them to create energy. So if you see one, look for the other. If you can't see the other one, you cannot see the person. If all you see standing up here is a man, you don't see me. You've got to see my mother in me to see me. You follow me here? So we're talking about, we measure these things that occur in electrical charge, and we call those electrolytes. The actual ions for you call them electrolytes, they occur in electrical charge. And also, we measure the ability to digest carbohydrates and fats when we're doing a pH measurement. Carbohydrates give you quick energy, fats give you slow energy. Which one is female? Fats. Fats is female. Acid is male. Carbohydrates is male. It's a quick energy. And we call that divisions of the autonomic nervous system. We divide it up male and female. We say the sympathetic nervous system is male. The parasympathetic nervous system is female. The sympathetic nervous system is what you use to get out of a crisis. Some people like to call it fight and flight. Whatever you need to get out of a crisis, that's what's going to fire off. Whenever you're stressed, be that stress emotional, spiritual, social, whenever you are stressed, this is what happens. The, the, the body says, I'm going to get out of this crisis and I'm not going to waste any energy. So it stops blood perfusion, a lot of blood to the digestive system. It stops a lot of blood to the reproductive system. It stops giving a lot of blood to the immune system. Whenever you are stressed, no matter what the stress is, this is what the body does. So we have a glandular system where we communicate this stress kind of thing. And we call the major gland the that the adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys. And it starts communicating this, let's get out of this stressful situation. It fires up these hormones. Hormones that participate in the action of your body. Whenever things change character, we give it a different name, but it has not changed. Vitamins are hormones. Hormones are enzymes. It's just a change of behavior that we're talking in science. It's a change of behavior. You, something you don't like this behavior, we say it's a parasite. If you like this behavior, we call it a symbiotic reaction. It's just behavior. It's all little insects in your body, birds and bees and raccoons, all of them inside your body. But we don't call them that, we call them bacteria. We call it fungus, which you have to have in your body at all times. So it's behavior we're talking about here. How is your body behaving? Is this female, is it male, is it sympathetic, parasympathetic? So we measure the behavior of the person you're going to test. The three people you test every month. That's how you're testing yourself, which you're obligated to do. So we know that we have this hormone cascade, adrenal glands, Managing your electrolytes is done primarily by your urinators. That's your kidney. It helps you with your pH level. It's, it's retaining water or keeping water. It's retaining electrolytes and getting rid of electrolytes. So it's managing your pH level as well as your breathing measures your pH level. If I'm very acid, I am high in carbon dioxide. Because remember, I said visualize someone being stressed, being chased by a tiger or something. So 
If I'm running from a tiger, I'm losing oxygen. That's why people say that they stop to get their breath. Don't they? They are, they are low in oxygen, high in carbon dioxide. Acid is high in carbon dioxide. Alkalinity is high in oxygen. You get high in carbon dioxide. You're running, you've got risk on your breath, so now you've got to stop and alkaline yourself. Remember, action is acid, so you're so acid, your body has to stop and get re-oxygenated again. Go back to the female principle to get some broken development going on. So you're destroying the tissue when you exercise. Whenever you exercise, you're destroying tissue because destruction is the male principle. Correct? So you're running, you're very high in carbon dioxide, and the body says, I gotta get out of this crisis some kind of way. So it takes the carbon dioxide, it takes part of it, of course, makes something called carbonic acid. You know when you get real acid, you get something to make you alkaline again, you call it alka so don't you get acid burn, you get alkaline. And you got a buffer, it's just too much on your life. So we have liver problems associated with Billy Rubin, and the ketones and fats that turn into sugar. That means the body lost the ability to break down carbohydrates and switch to fats. You don't want to see that in that indicates some kind of diabetic disease because the pancreas is responsible for helping you break down carbohydrates. So when it's too sick to break them down, the body says, I can't use the pancreas to break it down. Well, I'm going to switch to some other source of energy because the pancreas can't help you break down this sugar, which the pancreas squirts out a hormone called insulin, and insulin triggers to break down the carbohydrates. <coughs> The next thing we do is we go to specific gravity, which is the amount of gravity that can be pressed on the earth. There's a whole lot of things in there, minerals in there, gravity can press down on. There's not a lot of gravity that has nothing to press down on. So high specific gravity means there's a lot of stuff that gravity can press down. And it shouldn't be there. So we got specific gravity above zero. 1.015 is specific gravity below 0.015. So we say above is minerals of extremely high intake of water or kidney stress. And when you have below 0.015, we say it's dehydration of possible too much salt, or diabetes, or overactive adrenal glands. Now, obviously, the adrenal glands are firing off because of something. And we got to make a decision whether one is male or one is female. So you'll have two choices. It's not just that you have to make a decision. Which one is male or which one is female? Which one would you, which one would you think would be responsible for water? Water is male or female. Absence of water is male. Which one would? You got to figure these things out. Female. Yeah. 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 Isn't it kind of easy there? Um, We say that's the female principle. The water, the kidneys, and then below it is the male principle. We see the adrenal glands firing off, so we know it's a stress reaction and stress of the sympathetic nervous system and all that sort of thing that goes with sympathetic stress. Okay. Yes? I have a question regarding system gravity. I took the test in part of my training a few months ago. I know that she was stressing for us to buy a 700 dollar machine before we were like the drop of the air line, and then you get a true reading because she claimed that the readings you get off of this test are not as accurate as this $700 chain. Do you believe in making that investment or speaking with this and going to take that? I wouldn't do this. I would just stick with this. Okay. Yeah, you can get machines that are more specific for each one of these tests. The pH paper is more specific than the pH reading for this one. You want whatever you do to be quite portable. Something you can take anywhere in the world. You don't want to be tied into these systems where you have to upgrade that program on that. 
you, you want to be free from the confinements of European culture, this kind of makes you free. Now, I have systems that do those kind of things myself. I don't even use them. I got one to analyze your eyes and run it through my computer program, tell you what's wrong with you. But I got to turn all that stuff around and do one reading that's going to cost me $75. Sure. Right away, you're not black folk out of it. Why'd I come to you? You just stick at me in the computer. You know, do what you want. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get too much response. So, in any case, the uh, next thing that shows up in the urine is blood, which does not mean the person is bleeding. So, we have hemolyzed blood and non hemolyzed blood. And on your colorimetric chart, you will see the hemolyzed blood gives you an even color. That's the blood cell that is split up and broken up. See your colorimetric chart. You see? You see that the. Uh, Non-hemolyzed blood is the one that looks like little pepper on the squares there. Do you see a colorimetric chart on the bottom? This is the one you have to be aware of. See the hemolyzed, non-hemolyzed blood? Non-hemolyzed means the blood cells that haven't been broken up. So it looks like little pepper on there. Got it? The blood cells are still together. Destroyed blood cells is male or female. Yeah. Right, so one of them is male, one of them is female. You always got to look for who the people. Now, if we can get the pH reading, which we already have done, it's quite clear. It's more precise with the paper. This is Crystal was telling me. I don't see a name tag. If I can't read the name tag, and usually I just put down a zero as your name. Yeah, take it off of that. <laughs> okay, get a little <laughs> So, we're talking about acid and alkalinity, and uh, you've already done that with your pH paper, and this gives you another reading, gives you a backup. So if you see the urine tends to be acid, it's going to be everything that falls under acid here. Do you follow me? Everything that falls under acid, those are the symptoms. Everything that falls under alkalinity, those are the symptoms. So you've already done that, but this is further giving you a delineation of what is going on with the person. Now if you get protein in the urine, you have to consider kidney damage or inflammation. Or possible allergies to food. All of the deeper, which is water, swellings. So we got no longer the ability to break down food. We got you're not using your water too well. So we probably have <laughs> water is female. Not using water is what? Yeah. So we got not using water, so you dump it into your tissue, that's why you got a deep on. And then you're not eating food. We know that digestion is shut down under the male principle of female principle. Yeah, so then to end it all up, we got stress and hypertension. Now we know this is a male thing. Got it. Just look for women, male or female. Once you got that, everything else is just going to fall right into it. Now we've got urobilinogen, which is intestinal bacteria acting on the bile from the liver. We got the word bile in here. When you see bile, that's liver. You don't know where it's coming from, but this is telling you where it's coming from. In the case of liver losing ability to make digestive enzymes, we knew it was a liver that was so foul, your ability. Liver is crashing. Consider blockage in the liver. Consider inflammation of the liver, hepatitis. Consider spleen dysfunction. The spleen stores blood. It also is involved in the arm, the spleen. Consider red blood cells dying due, due to toxicity to an infection. We know the liver deals with bacteria helping to cleanse your body, keeping you free of infection, and living involved in the energy. So we all of this is just a liver read. Now we get down to uh, nitrites, and I gave you the uh, female principle for nitrites. And in medicine, we tend to stay on the male principle. We don't like dealing with females. This is European medicine. 
And European medicine focuses on the male principle. I don't think that's me. <laughs> Okay. So we're talking about nitrites. Everything has a positive function and a negative function. So since we're looking at a medicine that's dominated by the male principle, all we look for is destruction. We look for the male principle. As you know, the men write the books, the founding of books on diagnosis and treatments written by military doctors, it's all male kind of stuff here. So we only care about this thing to destroy bacteria, infections. We don't care about wells. You don't go go to the doctor and say, "Well, you're healthy, but I want to make you more healthier." Never, you never get that. That's the female principle. We only focus on male principle: destruction, white blood cells, something that can attack. Got it? <laughs> but nitrites have a positive function. They help regulate your blood pressure, help dilate your veins and arteries. They make them more expansive, dilate. That's the positive function of it. Helps your muscles spasm and you know, help your muscles just contract and expand. It's female. We don't give a damn. This is male medicine here. Be clear on that. So if, if you follow the system that you woman, you're going to get sick no matter. Because all we're going to do is make you into a healthy man. With the whole chemistry, diagnostic techniques are set up based on making men healthier so they can go back to combat. That's why the man in charge of medicine is the surgeon general. Still comes under military logic. That's right. But don't get all bent out of sorts here. You know you're in a self defense mode. You know you're doing some damage control. You know you've been whacked a long time ago. So we're looking at nitrate trites and we're looking at positive function. So if it can't do the positive function, it's going to go ahead and do this negative function. This is shutting down and going to do all those female things so infection is going to rise, all that kind of stuff. Leukocytes of white blood cells indicates an infection. Or the white blood cells weren't put together healthy enough and they fall apart. Or you didn't get a clean catch, which means that usually with ladies, some of the uh, urine may touch some of the tissue. That's one of the benefits of being able to stand up and pee. You get a clean catch. Well, my sister Carolyn can stand up and pee. I got issues. <laughs> We're just going to do uh, idea of how this thing rolls, and the more you do it, the more this comes to you. So don't try to get everything into your brain at one time. Just go slow, and it comes to you. All knowledge does it come cerebral. Some things you feel, some things you get better understanding, you can smell certain things. Sometimes you get a better understanding, you can hear certain things, you get music. Some understanding comes to you other ways. Now, when we get all engrossed in this whole thing of synthetic pressure of that nervous system, uh, you have your test form for your homework. And it's that health assessment. I don't know where it is in the book. Where, where's it at? Yeah. It's all the way in the back. Take it out. There should be two pages. You have it? This is what you have to do. You're going to run your test, you're going to do the pH, you're going to do the multis, and you're going to record this information. The first, as I mentioned before, you got to have some kind of approach to this person you're dealing with, the specimen, I mean, person, whatever you want to call them. Um, so we're going to use what they call bedside manners which is the way to talk to them. We have to talk to people according to the gender they are. We talk to men differently from we talking to women. Remember in the second trimester of your mother's pregnancy, your brain is masculinized or feminized. That's when the, the body physiologically makes the decision to a man or a woman. It's not done after you're born and you're 30 years old, say you're a woman trapped in a man's body. 
has done in the second trimester of your mother's pregnancy. That's when the brain is feminized or masculinized. The decision is made. And that organizes thinking differently forever. So usually, the program runs like this for the man. Oh, maybe I should do the females and stop being prejudiced, I suppose. I'm going to look out for you brothers, OK? So we're going to do this. The male brain is organized a little different. Uh, ladies don't know this, so this is it. So we're talking about how information comes in our system and goes out of the system. We'll start it in the second trimester of our prenatal growth and development. So what happens if you just use the elemental understanding situation, you would say that the male process of information going to a earth, which you are writing down. Mm -hmm. It's all test material. Earth. And then we go to air. Then we go to water. Then we go to fire. And I think this is in the new African Holistic State Health. If you have the new book, it's in there. So you want to write it down. Everything I'm saying is in there. You got the new book, so not a problem. So we go from earth to what? And then we go to water and go to fire. Okay. That means we earth is gathering information, then we think about it, then we feel it, and then we take it to fire, which we call the sun god raw. You take it to God. God is that top line gap. Top line and bottom, that's God. This idea doesn't help manifest God in me, I need to stop thinking this way. See, that's the bottom line. So we go from thinking to then feeling. Then the ladies go this way. They go from earth to water to air to fire. Just, to, just think of it like you on this planet. I mean, for the ocean is earth. And on top of the ocean, the ocean is water. The top of the, the ocean is air. The top is the sun. I mean, you have to write down that thing right outside. <laughs> okay, so we're saying that ladies feel, then they think about it. So what happens is we know these genders, so we know how to deal with this gender program. So we're saying if a man's talking to a lady, he should tell a lady how he feels first. And then how he thinks second. Mm -hmm. Say how he feels first, and then how he thinks second, because that's her program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you try to talk to her like she's on your program, you just don't get the argument. <laughs> so you're arguing against your nature, and that's not going to work. <laughs> it's better to say how you feel. I feel a little bit untouched with myself really disturbed, and I think I need to go to the basketball game tonight. <laughs> but if you do it that way, it works much, much better. Yeah, I should say how I feel first to you. That's how I think. And then the ladies always say, we don't talk about our emotions, see? Because we're not talking on that program. They tell us, see, you never talk about it. It's hard anymore. You don't know how to communicate. <laughs> but you gotta say how you feel first. It's more important than how you feel and what you're thinking about. And you know what you're feeling is wrong anyway. <laughs> so in any case, um, we're talking about how does the learning style and how the person learns. So we're gonna listen to the person and they're gonna tell you how they learn. An auditory learner uses a lot of auditory words to say that doesn't sound right. That sounds kind of funny. They always use an auditory word. So when you hear them do that, you say the auditory person, things are clear by using auditory words. Follow me? Yes. A visual person is going to say, I don't see what you're talking about. That's not clear. So when you're talking to them, use visual words. A rhythm person say so that didn't move me, that didn't grab me, that shook me up. They use all those kind of rhythm and movement. So when you talk to them, use those kind of words. So we establish gender, we establish how they learn, and we got to know whether they are abstract thinkers, con concrete thinkers, sequential, or random. 
more than likely a concrete person, you know, they like they got to see this thing. You should, you know, don't tell them, let me see how you do this. You know, they can't go with all that abstract talking. You know, tell them to you explain this stuff, no, just let me see how you do it. They, they, they concrete, they gotta see this thing. They gotta see the cotton and pick the cotton. Concrete. It's like we were trained. No abstract thinking there. Now we got the random learners, and those random people who do it, they learn very slow. So you always got to take a commercial break when you talk to them. So they learn very slow. They're random. They read a little bit of this book, read a little bit of that book, listen to a little bit of that song, get back to that later. <laughs> they don't learn very fast. They learn at a slow pace. That's why they do a little bit of this and come back to the week later. But they learn very slow. So the best when you deal with a random learner, just take little breaks and say, your pH level is a little off. Can you make some snow tomorrow? Just walk off the wall. <laughs> and they can follow you, you know, and they're right there. <laughs> so if you, if you keep going on that one subject, that takes a, that's a fast learner. So if they focus on something that for 15 minutes, they ain't going to do that. Walt Disney and everybody knows that they just go quick, what you call a Video, they just go quick and say, these people can't pay attention, damn it. They were just flashing. They said that that's what we call learning disorders, actually. Like uh, Bush, he has learning disorders. No, he does. That's what that's the logical fact. You know, they, they, they miss, lose a place and throw any word in there or make up a word. But he has a learning disorder, quite obvious. Anybody has mental health takes. So we're talking about. The, the random learner as opposed to the sequential learner who says, you ask them to do something, oh, I got to finish this first. And the way I finish it, then I'll do that. And everything's in sequence. So you can't break that sequence. They got to finish one task and start another. Even if you like it, if you're in a relationship and you're going to the movie or something, in the car and you're getting ready to go to the movie and the song is going, say, no, wait, let me finish this song first and let's go in. They can piss you off. <laughs> They're sequential. So you got to figure out whether they're sequential, random, concrete, or abstract. So the abstract person learn us very, you know, they say, well, don't do that. And they won't ask you why. They say, okay, that's the day they have to figure that thing out. So, okay, that's why I shouldn't do that. You know, I'm not able to understand this. I shouldn't do that. But a concrete person then do that and say, yeah, I'm not doing it. You can mess it all up. But see, that's how they learn. They have to do that. It's like tell a little boy who's conquered, say, don't go out in that yard and climb that tree. And they go out in the yard and climb the tree, you fall down and bust the ass, right? <laughs> then the mother gets mad and says, I told you not to climb that tree. He's concrete. <laughs> you tell me, I don't know why I shouldn't climb that tree. <laughs> He's concrete. You are going to get this. So you got to figure these things out. And this helps you have your bedside manners. This is what it's all about.